Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. Well, I'm a bit late to the party on this one, but let's talk about direwolves. As I'm sure you're already aware, bioengineering company InGen, uh, I mean uh, Colossal, have recently announced, to much fanfare, that their geneticists have successfully recreated the extinct Pleistocene direwolf. However, they have done nothing of the sort. The three tiny and adorable white wolf pups that have been so heavily featured in the news unsubtly named Romulus, Remus, and most tellingly, Khaleesi, have absolutely no real direwolf DNA inserted into their genomes, simply being gene-edited members of Canis Lupus, the living grey wolf. Nor are they clones. Given the degraded state of Pleistocene DNA samples from extinct animals, this would be impossible. Instead, the colossal geneticists have made 14 modifications to 20 genes from the genome of the modern Canis Lupus, selecting for traits that, they claim, reflect those of the Pleistocene direwolf, such as larger teeth, a bulkier physique, and snow-white coats. The company has now released a non-peer-reviewed paper detailing their own research into the genetics of the direwolf, finding that the genus was still a basal member of Canina, although apparently diverging from grey wolves about 4.5 million years ago. The study also claims that these animals were the result of hybridization between different canids, being a combination of canina with admixture from the South American canids of Cerdocyonina. This is certainly interesting, although I'll have to wait for the paper to be reviewed by other scientists before I fully accept its findings. Strangely, the results of the paper contradict Colossal's press release, implying that direwolves were very close relatives of the grey wolf. Also, I noticed that one of the many contributors to the paper was none other than George R. R. Martin, renowned geneticist which makes me super sceptical of the company's real aims. This information contradicts previous studies, such as a detailed 2021 analysis, which revealed that Pleistocene direwolves were not closely related to grey wolves, and were not even members of the genus Canis, being their own unique American canines in the genus Anocyon, which diverged from Canis lupus almost 6 million years ago. They were found to have been the most basal members of the clade Canina, the so-called wolf-like canids, which also includes the living side-striped and black-backed jackals, the African-painted dogs, the dole of South and East Asia, as well as the successful genus Canis. Therefore, any morphological similarity to modern grey wolves would represent instances of convergent evolution for a macro-predatory carnivorous lifestyle. This would also mean that individuals of Anocyon dirus almost certainly didn't resemble scaled-up versions of the grey wolf, and in fact may have looked quite different and unique. And they were not just different in outward appearance, but also internally, possessing a variety of important anatomical differences, including a more robust build, larger skulls, more powerful jaws with a higher sagittal crest, comparatively shorter limbs, smaller paws, and an overall smaller brain. Thus, when Colossal claimed that the yelps of their supposed direwolf pups represented the first direwolf howl heard for 10,000 years, this is nonsense. We cannot even be sure if Anocyon howled as a method of communication, as other members of Canina, such as dolls and the African painted dogs, don't make grey wolf-like howls. Also, Colossal's website and marketing blitz have heavily tied their designer Canis Lupus pups to the Game of Thrones franchise seemingly claiming that the fantasy direwolves from the TV show and George R. R. Martin's book series are accurate to the real extinct animal, which they aren't at all. In Martin's fiction, the direwolves of northern Westeros are truly enormous, being the size of small horses, and are capable of ripping off a man's arm in a single bite. The real genus Anocyon was nowhere near this massive, being comparable to very large individuals of the modern grey wolf, weighing between 60 to 70 kilograms on average, and standing about 3 feet tall. So still a very scary animal worthy of respect, but nothing like the oversized wolf dogs of Westeros. Similarly, I'm not sure why Colossal chose to emphasise the need for their phony direwolves to have white coats. Are they implying that the extinct Anocyon possessed this coat colour by default? Or was this simply to tie in with the popularity of Jon Snow's white direwolf ghost? The real Anocyon had a very wide range and lived in a whole host of different climates and ecosystems, from cold open parkland just south of the Laurentide ice sheet in southern Canada 
to the warm savannas of South America. Different local populations probably possessed a wide array of coat colours, although this animal would not have dwelt in especially snowy environments, except at the very northern edge of its range. Interestingly, remains attributable to Anosion have been recovered from northern China, although the identity of these remains controversial. Aside from this, fossils of the direwolf have been recovered from across the United States, Mexico, as well as northern and western South America, perhaps even reaching into the pampas of Argentina. Two different subspecies are known, with these being Anosion dirus dirus of eastern North America and Anosion dirus gildii of California and Mexico. The South American fossils have generally not been assigned to their own species. Isotope analysis has found that these powerful predators did indeed hunt big game, targeting whatever large herbivores were most common in the ecosystem, including bison, horses and camelids. They probably did so in packs, although dire wolves were not as well adapted for long distance running as modern grey wolves are. Given the power of their jaws and teeth, Anosyan individuals almost certainly scavenged megafaunal carcasses as well. While their remains are widespread, by far the highest density is concentrated at the La Brea Tar Pits in California, where thousands of disarticulated individuals have been found. These remains date to between 40,000 and roughly 10,000 years ago, when the climate of this region was cooler, moister and less seasonal than it is today. This environment supported large numbers of herbivores, including bison, horses, camels, pronghorns, ground sloths, and, more rarely, Colombian mammoths and mastodons. Competing large carnivores would have included American lions, Smilodon fatalis, Arctodus, as well as more ancient representatives of modern species, such as cougars, coyotes, and grey wolves, with the latter two being noticeably more robust than their living relatives. Dire wolves were the most common carnivore to be found at La Brea, indicating that they lived and hunted in large groups, although their social structure and behaviour remains mysterious. It has recently been found that males possessed a proportionally longer baculum than all living canids, suggesting increased competition for mates and perhaps non-monogamous breeding, which is quite different than the situation in grey wolves. Anosion was a victim of the end Pleistocene extinction event, although recent evidence suggests that the genus survived into the early Holocene, with its ultimate extinction being caused by the disappearance of megafaunal prey animals. Meanwhile, the smaller and less hypercarnivorous grey wolf survived and eventually moved into a similar niche during the Holocene. So why have Colossal decided to engage in such a misleading, sensationalist media campaign that harms public understanding of science? We've got to have money. Oh yeah, that's why. This company has hitched their wagon to the Game of Thrones franchise, and have created three so-called direwolves, based more on fantasy pop culture than hard science. Still a pretty impressive feat, but also a cynical one. This reminds me of a scene in the Jurassic Park novel, where John Hammond and Henry Wu talk about the reality of the park's dinosaurs. Wu worries that the public won't accept the recreated dinosaurs, as they look too different from the sluggish, tail-dragging monsters that were still common in popular culture at that time. He suggests changing the dinosaurs to make them more palatable to general audiences, but Hammond rejects this, stating that the park's animals are fine as they are. It's also disappointing that so many media outlets, as well as George R. R. Martin and other celebrity backers, have responded so credulously to these claims without doing any research for themselves. I guess clicks and ego stroking are more important. <laughs> Seriously, old Georgie boy will literally do anything except finish that damn book. I also wonder what kind of lives these wolves are going to live as they grow up without a pack. Does Colossal intend to create more of them in the future? And will they live out their lives as pampered zoo attractions in a fenced off park? I hear tropical islands off the coast of Costa Rica are great for that sort of thing. They are presumably never going to release these animals into the wild, when even regular grey wolves are a very controversial subject among farmers and ranchers. It also sets a dangerous precedent for conservation. Why work to preserve endangered living species when we can just revive them in the future, even if the world looks like Mordor and there is no space for them in the wild? I know Colossal are involved with efforts to preserve the critically endangered red wolf, which is great, and these developments function as a proof of concept, that could be used to help revive species wiped out by humans in the far more recent past, 
such as the passenger pigeon, South African quagga, or even potentially the thylacine. But do they really need to bend the truth so heavily to the general public and investors to achieve this? So no, scientists have not resurrected the extinct Pleistocene direwolf, but have instead created grey wolves with some similar traits to both the real extinct animal and the fantasy creatures of George R. R. Martin. Thanks for watching everyone! The next episode will be the 200th episode special, for which I'll be returning to one of my favourite subjects, the Paleocene mammals that lived in the aftermath of the KPG extinction event. See you again soon. Cheerio!